Well, may I please have the sugar? Uh, hello. Uh, there isn't any here. I would think you would see that. I would think I would, too. But I didn't. Myself, I don't drink any sugar. Me. One lump, when it comes in lumps. Otherwise, one spoon. I've known people to do that. But what really upsets them are those little bags. Yeah, you never know how much is in them. <laughs> yeah. Look. I don't mean to bother you with my personal what? trouble. Never mind. Oh, no. Go, go on talking. I'm listening. What I mean to say is, I don't mean to bother you with my personal troubles, but, but I, I've got this problem. What makes you think you're bothering me? You look like a nice boy. Your problems don't bother me. You've got a problem, I want to hear it. You know, uh, th that's a very good feeling, being able to discuss things with people. Uh, that's a very good... Feeling? It's a feeling people don't have often enough, either. Oh, what I mean is that, oh, nowadays in this troubled world, people become selfish. They don't seem to care anymore about the problems of others. I agree. I entirely agree. It isn't that people don't try to be helpful and understanding. It's just that everyone is so busy with, with busy work, with their own troubles, so, so that... So no one seems to be interested in other people. That's a very astute observation. I think that people are changing. It's happening all the time. They don't seem to care anymore for all the little things, the things that make us all human. Or maybe even a little more than human. That's a very intelligent thing to say. And sensitive, too. I mean, I thought that, but I've never been able to put it into words. I don't know why I said that. No. Actually, now I do. And I have to promise you won't tell anyone. Who would I tell? I don't know, but you have to. I'd be embarrassed if I thought. Okay, I promise. Well, I have this recurring dream. It happens, well, not every night, but, but, but very often. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. You don't have to. I read this book. It's perfectly normal. The trouble is if you worry about it. No, no. This is a dream that I'm at the top of this big, tall building, and I'm throwing confetti down at the world. You're not kidding. And way down on the street below, there's this girl. Actually, it's my mother. And she's screaming up at me, put away your roller skates. You got roller skates? No, no, that's just what she says. And then the building starts swinging from side to side. And I scream, Daddy, you're shaking me off. And he does. No, in fact, he isn't even there. But then I, I get scared and I wake up. Oh, you poor boy. But interesting, very interesting. That's just the beginning, though. What I mean is, it's indicative of my entire personality. You see, I've got this problem. You know, you remind me very much of my roommate. Oh, of course, my roommate is a girl. I wasn't worried. A girl like you. Well, anyway, she was going with this fella. He was very wealthy. And he picked her up this one night, and he asked her in this very plain and blunt way if she would make love with him. And she said no. So then he asks her if she minds whether... Well, this is very difficult to say. There should be no difficulty. Openness invites openness. Well, if she minds whether he does something for himself. Well, she said she didn't mind, and so he did. Uh, this is not the average sort of fellow that you meet. Oh, no. So then he took her home right away. Do you know what he did? No. Right then and there, he asked me to go out with him. This is not the average sort of fellow. And I did. Oh. I mean, I gave it a great deal of thought. He was a very wealthy fellow with his beautiful Ferrari. Well, that's very important to a girl. I mean, it wasn't like he was asking me to marry him or anything. I know I shouldn't be afraid, but I hesitate to ask. You have nothing to fear but fear itself. My father says that. Did he? I feel I should tell you this doesn't shock me in the least. Naturally not. In fact, I, I blush to tell you some of the worldly experiences I've had. Just shut your eyes and talk fast. 
Well, you may not know this, but I write. You look like that kind of a boy, very sensitive, if you know what I mean. Well, I would think that's only incidental. I would think it's much more important to be perceptive. Well, if you were perceptive enough, you would realize that it is partly what I meant by sensitive. Sensitivity is an all-embracing term that embraces perceptivity. Uh, what kind of poetry do you write? Poetry that describes my place in the world, if you understand what I mean. I, I mean, in a world of materialistic things and, and materialistic people, an unmaterialistic person has to constantly redefine himself. Take this one poem of mine. You don't mind? Mm. Indolently riding home with lapstrake eyes shining into a burning cup of fluid insomnia, I look at the unending worldly wishbone of the amalgamated spiralum of life. Oh, life. And I think of the unending sagittal perfection of tiny, tinkly things buried deep within the soul. The essence of mummified existence, of real and imagined desires for death. Oh, death. But suddenly, a flash of wonderment, as the space and time of a vernal equinox imbue all the world with the laughter of spring renewed. The world is my brother. Oh, brother. Oh, brother. You know, that doesn't sound like a very worldly experience. You know, I think that there is very much about you that's entirely childish. Look, you don't have to waste your time. So far as men and women are concerned, men are in many ways much more childish. After a certain age, it equalizes. But isn't that the very wonder of it? Two people alike, and yet so very different. I would think there has to be a meeting ground. Oh, it gives me chills just to think about it. And at the same time, to be here talking like this. I was thinking very much the same thing. Isn't it wonderful, the depths of emotion a person can experience? Yes. The torment of the human soul? Yes. You see? Kiss me. I've got this problem. 